to another tutorial video. This time around, we're going to be looking at why you add non-controlling interests and subtract equity investments when calculating enterprise value. And we're going to focus on one of those scenarios in this lesson and then in the one after this, in part two of this, we're going to go through another scenario to further illustrate this concept. So to give you some background, with the concept of enterprise value, I'm not going to go over the basics here. I'm assuming you already know what it is, what it means. If not, see some of our other lessons on that topic. But pretty much everyone agrees that when you calculate it, you take a company's equity value, their market cap, you subtract cash, and then you add debt. So those are all standard items. But after that, it gets murkier. And not everyone agrees on which items you should add or subtract and in what cases. So sometimes people will calculate enterprise value differently depending on the situation. So if it's acquisition versus just analyzing a company as a standalone entity, they may calculate it somewhat differently. One common scenario that comes up is what happens when a company owns a percentage of another company. So not the entire company. In that case, it's pretty clear that you would probably add everything relating to enterprise value for that other company. But what if you only own 70% or what if you only own 30% of that other company and that ownership is reflected somewhere on your balance sheet? What do you do in that case? And there are really two scenarios where this happens. The first is called an equity investment or an associate company. And it's when a parent company owns under 50% of another company. And in this case, it records that stake as an asset on its balance sheet. It doesn't record all the other company's line items, but it does record the value of that company times its ownership stake percentage as an asset. The other scenario is called a non-controlling interest, formerly known as a minority interest. And this is when the parent company owns over 50%, but less than 100%. And in this case, it's a little bit more involved because what you have to do here is consolidate the financial statements 100%. We'll see an example of this in part two of this lesson. And then you have to record the value of the percentage you do not own as a liability or equity item. So it's on the liabilities and equity side of the balance sheet. So these are two common scenarios. And and you can see these in real life all the time. One of the other case studies we looked at, this Charter Communication Liberty Media deal, you can see here that the company acquired a 27% ownership interest in Charter. So this is an example of how you could see this in press releases. You could see this with real companies all the time where you have under 100% ownership. You could just ignore these items because you could say, well, unlike equity or debt or preferred stock, these are not real funding sources for the company. They're not. It's not as if they're funding their operations with these items. But there are two problems with this. Now, problem number one is that the equity value of the parent company already reflects the value of these stakes. And here's what I mean. When you go and buy shares in a company, you know how much that company owns of other companies. So those shares that you buy already partially at least reflect the value of those stakes. Now, a great example of this is Yahoo and Alibaba over roughly a nine or 10 year period. And if you look at some of the press releases for this, you can see that a lot of people are pointing out that Yahoo's stake in Alibaba, which was originally 40% reduced to about 20%, was actually more valuable than Yahoo, the company as a whole. And you can just do a search for some of these items. It got to the point where a lot of investors were actually buying Yahoo shares just so they could take advantage of Alibaba's growth. So this is a really good example of how when the parent company's share increases or decreases, it often reflects what's going on with these other companies that it owns a percentage of. So that's the first problem. And then the second problem is that you need to make an apples to apples comparison with valuation multiples. So if enterprise value reflects the value of all the company stakes, then you need, to, you need to make sure that metrics like EBITDA, EBIT, and so on also reflect the value of those stakes. If company A owns 70% of company B and 30% of company C, equity value is already gonna reflect those stakes. And so will enterprise value if you don't add or subtract anything. So you look at this and you think, okay, well, it's easy. You just make sure that EBITDA and EBIT also reflect 70% or 30% of these metrics. But the problem, is that it doesn't exactly work out like this if you just take these metrics from the financial statements because of accounting rules. And that's really the main reason why you are adding and subtracting these types of items. It's all due, due to accounting under both GAAP and IFRS. And what you need to do is make some adjustments and you need to reflect either 100% of the value of a partially owned company or 0% of the value of a partially owned company in both enterprise value and EBITDA. And that's the easiest way to fix this problem. So let's look at a simple example first with equity investments or associate companies. And this would be an example of the Yahoo Alibaba situation where they own 40%. So what happens in real life in this situation? So here's an example for this scenario. So the parent company, the combined company here really, has an equity value of 350, cash of 50 million, debt of 200 million. So we're just going with those numbers. And if you just calculate enterprise value by taking equity value minus cash plus debt, you get to 500. And you look at that and you say, okay, well, that, that seems fine. The problem though, 
is that the parent company here also owns 30% of another company. I'm calling this an associate company here. Now that value of the associate company is around 100 million. So they own around a 30 million stake in it. And the problem is that since they have this ownership percentage, it's gonna throw off a lot of these other numbers. Let's take a look at the income statement so you can see what I mean. Parent company's income statement in this scenario under the rules of accounting, here's what happens. The combined company and the parent company are effectively the same on the income statement down to really the income tax line down here. So if the parent company owns under 50% of another company, all that happens is that everything in the top part of the income statement is just the parent company's own numbers. So yes, the associate company over here, they have revenue of 100, they have operating income and so on and so forth, but you do not add any of these items. So this operating income here, it's literally just equal to the operating income of the parent company and you reflect 0% of the associate company's operating income, even though you own 30% of the associate company. And those are just accounting rules. And what happens is at the bottom of the income statement. So down here, this is where you finally adjust for it. And you have something called equity investment earnings or earnings from associate companies, or the names vary, but it's always the same idea. And what you do here is then you say, okay, you know what? The associate company had net income of seven and we own 30% of it. So you know what? Let's add that 30% times the seven and then we get to our real combined net income down here. So the point of this is that before the very bottom net income line on the income statement, even if you own 30% or 20% or 40% of another company, you're not gonna reflect anything from that other company on your own income statement. And that creates problems with these metrics and multiples. The problem is that this equity value of 350 here, this reflects the 30% times the 100 here. So without this ownership, so if the, we own say only 0%, equity value here would be only 320. So the equity value already reflects that, but the operating income, so the EBITDA and EBIT over here, these, as you just saw, these only reflect the parent company over here. So we have a case where our enterprise value as it stands right now, reflects this 30% ownership because the equity value also reflected the 30% ownership, but these metrics reflect 0%. To fix this, you might look at this and say, okay, well, I know what we can do. We can take our EBITDA over here and sure, this is the parent company's EBITDA right now, but you know what? Let's just go over and let's just add the associate company's operating income plus DNA. So let's take their operating income plus DNA over here, and then let's multiply by the percentage that we actually own. And look at that, it's fixed. So our EBITDA is now higher. And now our EBITDA reflects 30% of the stake in our other, in the other company. And so does enterprise value. So look at that, our problem is fixed. Here's the problem with doing that. In real life, the parent company is never gonna disclose enough information to actually do this. They're only gonna show the associate company's net income. So here in this example, yes, we have our associate company over here. We have our parent company and our combined company. In real life, all they're ever gonna show you is the combined company. So it's as, as if these items over here, parent company versus associate company, they don't even exist. So we don't have this information and so it's not realistic for us to actually do that. All we can figure out is the associate company's net income. We can't figure out anything else above that and so it's impossible to actually go through that. And this example with adding say 30% of the associate company's EBITDA, can't do it in real life. So what we're gonna do is say, you know what? Right now, this enterprise value reflects 30%, this 30% that we own. But what we're gonna do instead is subtract this 30%. Why? Because EBITDA and EBIT show 0% of the other company's EBITDA or EBIT. To do an apples to apples comparison, enterprise value also has to show 0%. So what we're gonna do in this situation, I'll just delete this addition to EBITDA that I made. What we're gonna do is have another line item here called value of equity investments or associate companies, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be equal to 100 times the 30% that we own in that other company. And then when we calculate enterprise value, we subtract this. So now we get to multiples that are different. And what we're doing here, if you really think about this, is this other company is worth 100. If we were to reflect 100% of its value, this would be 570 for the enterprise value. But since we're reflecting 0%, it's only 470. And that's what we do in this case. To get an apples to apples comparison, we remove the entire value of our stake from enterprise value because it's very difficult to do that for EBITDA and EBIT. To get an apples to apples comparison, we want 0% of this associate company in 
both sets of numbers here. And then this way, our numerator and denominator for enterprise value to EBITDA and enterprise value over EBIT both reflect 0% of this other company. And so that's why we subtract the value of associate companies or equity investments in this type of analysis. So that's it for our lesson. Just to do a quick recap here, everyone agrees on certain items. Subtract cash, add debt when calculating enterprise value. Gets a little bit murkier with ownership stakes. Some people may just ignore these altogether, but the better approach here is to subtract equity investments and add non-controlling interest. We'll look at that in the next tutorial. The reason is because equity value, market cap, already implicitly reflects the value of these stakes. We saw this example with Alibaba and Yahoo, where Alibaba ended up being worth more than Yahoo, the business itself. So investors know what they're getting into when they buy and sell shares. They're often doing it to take advantage of these underlying stakes. And you need to make an apples to apples comparison. And when you have these different ownership percentages, the problem is that under the accounting rules, EBITDA, EBIT, operating income, and so on, they only reflect 0% or 100% of the other company's values. But enterprise value is gonna reflect the actual percentage, so the 70% or the 30%. So you need to adjust by making sure that enterprise value, as well as EBIT and EBITDA, either show 100% of the value or 0% of the value so that the numerator and denominator of the valuation multiples are the same. So that's it for this lesson. Coming up next, we're gonna look at a similar scenario, this time with non-controlling interest where we have a majority owned company. So a company where we own over 50%, but less than 100%. And we'll see how that compares and contrasts with this example.